Hi guys, it's Simon from Techno Life Video, and I just want to do a quick video about living with this little guy here, Apple Watch. Um, just to talk about it a little bit, um, and also talk about the scratches. Um, so, what's it like um, living with Apple Watch? At least for me, what's my experience been like? Um, well, I have to say, initially, I was obviously very much every time it beeped on my wrist. Um, I was standing up. I've got to stand up, you know. I've got to get my um, achieve my goal for today. Um, but you know, I think that we often get um, uh, you know we get accustomed to things like that. You know, it's very easy to kind of just go, oh, that again. And after a while, you know, it it, it washes over you a little bit, and you're not quite as obsessed by it. It's a bit like um, you know when you get something new. It's like you get your new phone. Um, you're always uh, kind of taking it out, playing with it, um, you get a new device, you're going to want to use it all the time, and obviously as, as time goes on, that wanes a little bit. Um, I think also, um, uh, between when I got the watch and now, we've had cold weather, and, and what you end up with is is the watch is actually um, kind of uh, sitting underneath um, a jacket, um, and therefore, because it's sitting underneath a jacket, um, you know, you, you, you can't just easily just lift your wrist and see the watch. You've got to lift your wrist, pull the jacket back. Sometimes by that stage, the, watch, the screen's kind of fallen off, uh, fallen off, turned off. So, you know, the convenience of that uh, is is somewhat muted that, you know, you, you start slipping your hand into your pocket and pulling your phone out, which is, because um, you've got to do, you know, that's a one-handed action. Whereas with you've got your jacket on, you do that, that's a one-handed action, but then you've got to pull the sleeve up with the other hand. It becomes a two-handed action, um, you know. And if you do the stretch your arm out to try to get your hand outside the sleeve, that definitely switches because pushing your arm away from your body, the screen will re it'll switch on, and then as you reach out, as you can see there, so I turn it on, and as I reach out, it turns off. So you go to stretch outside your sleeve by just straightening your arm, and by the time you've done that, the screen switched off again. And then, of course, if you bend your arm, sometimes the the sleeve, even if the you know the screen hasn't gone off, the sleeve goes back over it. Or as you bend your arm back in, and the screen comes back on, the sleeve goes over. So, you know, it's um, it's not a perfect kind of solution in that sense. Um, and I found myself, yep, yeah, like I say, going back to my phone a little bit when I've got lots, when I've got multiple jackets on or jumpers on or in in the in the kind of cold weather. So. From that sense, you know, you start yourself using it less. Um, you know, um, it's certainly handy to have it there, definitely. I mean, you get text messages coming in, you have a quick look, and you dismiss it. So, there's elements where, you know, uh, over the initial stages I've used it less, but then there's also this thing where, um, if, 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 your mess if your phone beeps and you pick your phone up and you turn it on and you see the message on the screen, you're looking at it going, well, I've picked it up now. Um, I might as well respond um, because I've got the phone in my hand. I've taken it out of my pocket. I've looked at it. I might as well respond because I've done all of that work. I may as well quickly respond to this. And then you may go, oh, there's also a Facebook notification. Okay, I may as well just deal with that as well. And, oh, an email has come through, so I'll deal with that. And then you find yourself getting bogged down in replying to all this stuff. Um, whereas with the watch, you know, you, you just turn, look at your wrist, you go... Oh, that text message by that person. Oh, look, that can wait. That can wait five minutes. That's fine. No worries. Like, it, I don't. I don't have to reply to that now. And the only thing is, with your phone, you, you may go. I don't have to reply to that now, but you've taken it out, so you may as well. Um, so that becomes then a reply, reply, and you keep on getting these messages going back and forth, and the, the conversation becomes continuous. Whereas with the phone, the watch, you go, yeah, I'll leave that for now. I can deal with that later, and therefore the extra technology actually moves you back into um, life a bit more. It takes away from your life being you know, dominated by you going back to the technology all the time. So in that sense, I've found it really, really great. Um, it, it really does allow you to re-engage in social situations. Um, and people might go, oh, I don't do that. It, everybody does. The amount of times you go out and you see a table full of people all sitting there on their phones, um, so for that part I'm very very grateful um, as I said the fitness stuff 
um, has waxed and, waxed and waned a little bit. It's really fantastic um, when you go for a, a you know a walk, a walk or a hike or something like that, and you can record record stuff. Um, believe it or not, I haven't ridden my bike because I busted my thumb. Um, uh, so since, since I got the watch, I haven't ridden my bike, and I busted my thumb, and I'm a bit nervous about going on the bike because the bike puts a lot of pressure on that part of the hand, and the thumb is still not very good, unfortunately, um, and it may never be the same again. Um, which is a bit disappointing, but I, I haven't actually recorded it on uh, riding a bike and seeing what it's like. Um, I'm a bit concerned if I come off and have, have a crash um, with the watch. Um, but um, in terms of big long walks, really been cool just to be able to kind of look at the wrist and kind of see where you're tracking and what your pace is. And you know, um, I've been doing some training with my partner, or she's training for an ultra marathon, and I've been kind of doing some walking with her. So it's been really cool. Um, in terms of the durability of the watch, now this is one area. Um, uh, look, I found it very good. Um, I've given it a light wipe down with with water on the band occasionally. Other than that, I haven't done anything with it. Uh, the the digital crown has stuck a few times where it's got like you push it and it doesn't roll and and, it, and it's so smooth normally that when it gets stuck and once I ran water through it um, and the other time it just stopped sticking so obviously there's just a little bit of dirt or something caught in there um, and, it, and it worked its way out um, I've been worried about the screen I was running in a stadium uh, refing basketball with the screen the screen was right next to these brick walls and I was worried about scratching it because this screen unlike the more expensive watch is not it's kind of scratch proof. This one is more shatter proof, but it is not scratch proof, and I was a bit worried about that. I'll try to get some photographs and put them in this video, but what I have now is along this front edge here. So it's the outside edge of my hand, which you can imagine if I'm holding my hand like that, this is the most exposed edge, and I actually have a bunch of little scratches on that curved edge. Um, there's no other visible scratches anywhere. I've knocked it on things, I've knocked it around a bit. Um, the body of the watch is still, and I'll take, as I said, I'll take some photographs of what this watch looks like. You'll st still see from the photographs um, uh, how pristine it is. So it still looks really good. Um, as I said, uh, we have had winter where it has been covered up quite a bit, um, and I used also a bit of a, a tennis sweatband a couple of times, just stuck that over the top of it when I was in that refing situation, so I didn't kind of grind uh, the face off um, of the watch. But look, all in all, um, look, I've been very happy. It's not a, a cheap accessory. Um, it's not something that I'm going to want to update every year or two years, really. Um, I see it being, you know, a longer thing than that. Um, and even with the limited functionality as now, I, I really like it. You know, I really like it. And um, uh, I'm very grateful that this technology has kind of just, actually, as I said, freed me up from technology. So, look, that's just some of my thoughts about living with Apple Watch. Um, don't want to make this any video any longer than it has already been, um, but it's worth considering. Um, if I was looking at it now, I would probably say uh, don't get one now until the next model comes out. Um, they have just released the new colors, but I still would think that um, kind of mid next year, mid 2016, there'll be a new watch coming out. And I always say if you don't buy very early on in the release cycle, always wait to the next one because it's basically a 12 month release cycle. So if you don't buy in the first month or two, even three months, I'd just leave it. You know, like I'd go, and definitely once you get to six months, don't even consider buying until the next one uh, kind of comes out. It just doesn't make any sense. So comment below. If you've got any questions regarding Apple Watch, um, do that, comment below. Like the video, please, of course, subscribe to the channel. I'm now past a thousand subscribers and it's just me talking to a camera. Um, so I'm happy with that and let's hope we can keep still growing this thing. Um, check me out on Facebook, Tech My Life Video on Facebook. And we'll see you in the next video. I'm Simon, Tech My Life Video. Bye.